strong. Hello everyone and welcome back for another Magic the Gathering Commander deck profile. Today we're going to be talking about my mono white equipment deck, Kemba. Now they're all, there are what, three different types of Kembas I think, but this Kemba, this Kemba is the one I've liked for a very long time, I've had in my first Commander deck. Uh, it wasn't the Commander itself, but today it sh she shall be my Commander. I've actually been playing the deck for a while and I'm really enjoying it. I've missed playing equipment so much and I'm very happy that I'm able to play it again. Uh, for those who don't know Kembo, Kembo is a 3 drop 2-2, two, two, sorry, 3 drop 2-4. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you create an amount of 2-2 two, two white cats equal to the number of equipment attached to it. So if you've got 2 equipment attached to it, that's 2 cats you make at the beginning of your upkeep. Like, they do have something sickness, so you can't attack with them in that turn, but that's fine. You've got multiple blockers. Multiple blockers, that's the important part. So, I think, let's get into the profile. So, of course, I got Spunk Out with the, uh, I think, for the alt art from the Commander, Ma uh, Commander Masters. Yeah, Commander Masters. So, yeah, thank you to my boy Todd for giving it to me. Appreciate my. Gotta appreciate the TO double D. So, yeah, Kimber. 2 4. Uh, 3 drop. 1 cars. 2 white pips. Pretty standard. So, for first creature. So, first creatures we have draw. So, a Esper Sentinel. Whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn, draw a card and their control plays X for X is Sentinel's power. Most of the time, very early on especially in the game, this will stay as a 1-1. Uh, but if it's like the first thing you drop in your turn, perfect, they're not going to pay 1. They're going to let you draw, so really good early game draw. Uh, pure Steel Paladin, because we're running an equipment deck. Whenever an equipment enters your battlefield under your control, draw a card, and then it's got Mailcraft. So Mailcraft is usually if you control free artifacts. This and this happens. But for this, the equip costs of equipment are zero. So you don't have to pay a single thing to equip. Which is why this is a staple in every equipment deck that has weight. Then we have Scrim. Uh, whenever you cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle, draw a card. So this is on entry. This is on cast. Like I only, re I only really use the aura and equipment. I don't really use the vehicle because I think vehicles are bad. I just think they're bad. I don't like them. My personal opinion, they're bad. You might have different opinions, but for me, they're bad. And for our last creature draw card, we've got Benny. I love this card ever since I got it in my uh, one of the. Streets of New Compendia Commander decks. I can't remember which one it was in, but yeah, I, I used this. I loved it. I used it in, a, uh, in my uh, oh, what's it called? Jetmere. I used it in my Jetmere Commander deck. Ah, good times. But yeah, it been it's got Convoke, so you can tap your, so I can tap three creatures, which I will have quite a lot, because I should at least have Kemba on board. So it could be a one white drop. Beginning of the end, beginning of each end, if you create a token, you draw a card. So Kemba and this, I'm guaranteed at least I draw each of my turns. If I can create a token on my opponent's turn, I still get to draw because it's the beginning of each, so it's not just your own. Probably why it was like 20 plus, it used to be like 20 plus pound. Okay, so now we go on to the other kind of equipment based creatures. We have Leonin Shiraki. Shiraki? I can never really pronounce the name. But I may activate a bit equip abilities anytime I cast an instance. So effectively, my equip abilities have Flash. Really good. Uh, Stone. Wait, no. Cogsworth. I love Cogsworth. He's so good. He also gives commanders. Oh, commanders you control have war 2 
uh, you can tap him to spare to add two white, but that can only be used to what? Yeah, to cast ores and equipment spells, or you can tap him to attach target or equipment you control uh, to a target creature you control. So, say your I know Sword of Rising Fire is attached to that creature, you can tap him to then attach that sword to this creature instead. Unfortunately, that can only be used as a sorcery, but that's okay because we at least have this still. Then we have Stoneforge Mystic. Don't really have to go into much about Stoneforge Mystic, we all know what it does. Same with Stone Heaver Giant. I like this card a lot. It's got Vigilance, so you can attack with it if you really want to. But Pulls from deck, puts on the battlefield, just pulls from deck, and then you can pay to tap and put it onto the battlefield. Like for the extra your two mana, yeah, for the extra like three mana, you can pull something in and pop it into the battlefield, which is pretty good. Uh, Armored Sky Hunter, when it attacks, you look at top six cards, reveal any ores or equipments, uh, put them onto the battlefield. If an equipment was put onto the battlefield, you can attach it to target creature. Yep, attach it to a creature. And plus, it's a fly. I don't have that much fly in the deck, so this helps. Uh, we have Rashka, Golden Club. So a 3-4 Vigilance, as long as this guy is equipped, all my cats get plus 2, plus 2 in Double Strike. So if I have a bunch of other cat tokens, yeah, they all have double strike. Because, yeah, <clears throat> she creates, Kemba creates, like, two twos. So already, they're four fours with double strike. Pretty good. We have Balin, the Wandering Knight. Free free, first strike. Uh, has double strike as long as two more equipment are attached to him. You may pay to and attach all equipment you control to Balin. So that can actually be activated as instant speed. The, the equip, so that's actually pretty cheeky. Like, if somehow Balin actually gets through, you can pay two and equip everything to him, so yeah, he does even more damage. Uh, we have a cat. If you guys haven't ever noticed, most of my creatures in this deck are cats. <laughs> well, yeah, this gives my artifact text proof, so yeah, it means they can't target my really important uh, artifacts. And then we have some token creators. Uh, cats get plus and plus one life lifelink. Enters, creates two, one more cats with lifelink. And we have Leonin War Leader. Whenever attacked, spits out two, one more cats with lifelink. Then we have the Defense Foundations, the the white mono white god from. Lost Canvas at Ixalan. If you would create one or more tokens, well, if you would create token, if one or more to creature tokens would be created under your control, uh, three times that many tokens are created instead. So, yeah, basically, I can get, instead of getting like, I don't know, one from Kemba, I'll get three. Instead of getting like three, I'll get like nine. It, it, it's really dumb. It would have been even more dumber if it just said tokens, but it only works with creature tokens. Uh, we have Aldrich, Master Tactician. So, whenever he and at least three other creatures attack, you choose which creatures block and how they block. So you can declare no blockers if you really wanted to. And just let your creatures just hit them in the face. Uh, the last creature is actually a Moon Shaker Cavalier. Why would I not want to give my cats flying? Pretty good. So this is the the mono white, um, like behemoth. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but instead of giving trample, gives them flying. This card's actually relatively cheap. Very cheap, actually. Last time I looked, it was like a tenner. So that's that's it for the creatures. Now for the artifacts, I'm going to go start with the basic artifacts. 
Obviously, we want a commander deck. Sewing. Vault Vessel. I kind of like the generic staple artifacts for commander. And then, because I'm wanting mono white, Pearl Medallion. Pretty much. Uh, I decided to pop this in just because for the act of draw, and I can pay a lot of life. Because I've got so much lifelink, so it should be fine. I'm actually running the One Ring. It's actually kind of ridiculous how much this is. I think out of time, this was more. This was more to. Uh, yeah, this was slightly more than buying the bundle box it comes in. So yeah, um, for those who don't know what the One Ring does, it uh, it has indestructible. If you cast it this turn. Uh, you have protection from everything till your next turn. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, lose one life for each bird encounter on the one ring. You can tap him, you can tap it, put a bird encounter on the one ring, then draw a card for each bird encounter. So you can tap this, put one out, draw a card, and then untaps. You lose one life, but then you can tap two counters. Draw two cards, then upkeep, lose two. So yeah, it's a uh, you get the picture. And since I've got, like, for example, so much life link in the deck, I should have no worries with this card. And uh, for the last basic artifact, I've just popped in a cage sun because why would I not want extra white mana to cast more of my equipments? And plus, my cats do get one one. Well, more of my white creatures do get one one, so it makes my tokens even bigger. Now for the equipments, I think I won like 20 equipments in here. Yep, fat, a fat 20 equipments. So, we're at staff. Obviously I'm going to start with the Swords of So-and-So. So, Sword of Feast and Famine. Protection from Black Green. Uh, deals damage. Uh, untap all your lands, your opponent discards a card. Ice and Fire, protection from blue red. Deals damage, you deal 2 damage to any target and draw a card. Half and Home, protection from white and green. Uh, deals damage, blink a guy out, pull in a land. Uh, pull in a basic land, sorry. Yeah, basic land. Sword of Forge and Frontier, protecting from green and from red. Uh, deals damage. Uh, exile top two cards. You may play them this turn. You may play additional land this turn. I'm back. Had to answer the door. Sorry. So, um, yeah. Exile two cards. You may play them this turn. Play additional land this turn. Sword of Once and Future, protecting from blue black. Uh, use the veil to. Yeah, then you may cast an into sorcery spell with mana rate two or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. But that spell will be put into a graveyard exile instead. Yeah, so I guess all my low drop instant sorceries that I run in here, I can cast them again. Also, protect for Simic. Simic? No, you're not Simic, you're Demir. Protect for Benir. Pretty good. And for the last sword of so and so is Sword of Wap. Wealth and power. So, uh, protection from sorceries and instances. That's really good. It means you can't be plowshared. Or effectively be dealt damage by other cards. Uh, being dealt damage by sorcery instant spells. So, yeah, deals damage to a player. Create a treasure token. Then you... Then... You, uh, when you next cast your instant sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. So I can cast. I basically have double cards. I have double cast cards. This card, uh, I th I think it might be slowly dropping. Like I bought this for like fifteen pound on like card market, so it it did drop. But I don't know if it's going up anytime soon. Uh, if it hasn't yet gone up, I would recommend buying this now because I doubt it's ever going to get to 15 again. 
So yeah, those are my uh, six car uh, swords of so-and-so. I decided to uh, bump it from five to six, and so far, I think six, I prefer six to five. It gives me extra regions why to one more swords. Uh, now we go on to the other equipments that give me like haste. So, Swifties, Hexproof and Haste. Honda Cloak, gives me Vigilance, Trample and Haste. Sword of Vengeance, first I couldn't Trample and Haste. Because I like me my haste. If I can make this, if I can get this to smack, like, early enough. Ideally, if I can get this, like, to be able to attack, turn free. Perfect. Um, then we are running a Mithril coat to give my to give my commander instructable. You can flash it in if there's a board wipe about to happen, which is great. Uh, Bassus collar, Death Touch, and Life Link. Stone Forge masterwork. The equipped creature gets a plus one plus one for each creature. For each other creature that shares a creature type. Tons of cats. I think I've got this. I think the biggest I've got this was like... I think like 17... 1721 I think. By using this. I'm just good. Made me the issue. Made me the problem. <laughs> Yay. Uh, Travel Blazer Boots. Non-basic land walk. So they say I have on a command tower. They can't block your creature. Card's really disgustingly good. It's really good. If you don't have one for your equipment deck, grab one. It got a reprint in the Toxic Commander deck from Orby One. Uh, command Plate. This card is busted in any monocolor equipment deck. Or any monocolor deck full stop. Because this card gives your gives the equipped creature plus three plus three. It's bl I don't know why it's always so blurry on screen. It's annoying. There we go. Uh, plus three, plus three. Has protection from each color that's not in your commander's color identity. So, I've got protection from blue, black, red, and green. Doesn't stop white, so I'm always fearful the source of plowshare. <laughs> but not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like... You can run this in two color decks. I would not recommend running this in a three color deck. No. Wouldn't recommend running it. Like, you'd never run it in a five or four, so why would you also run it in a three color manner? It's perfect for mono colors, and you can. It's, it's decent in two colors. You never want to go to like three colors or more. Uh, then we have this. Armor, which gives the equipped creature plus six plus six, and when the equipped creature attacks, you can destroy target permanent. You can also destroy land. I have never destroyed land with this card. I've only ever destroyed non-lands because no one wants to. No one wants to. No one wants someone to destroy their land, unless it's a game-winning land like Maze of If, or at this point, Field of the Dead. Those are probably the only lands I would destroy. Then we have Quilter Spike. Quick creature gains step touch. Whenever a quick creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses half his or her life rounded up. So yeah, little little cheeky spike. I actually took this out because when I was getting into magic, I felt that this was like too too cheaty, too too uh, so I took it out. But I'll pop that back in now because I think it's fine. I've learned more about the game now. Uh, then we have the Soul Cleaver. Creature, creature gains vigilance whenever another to whenever a artifact or creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield. Put a one-one counter on the equipped creature. So if all my if my like little little cat tokens die, I make from this. All my one-one cats die. Most of the time, this is the only guy that's getting equipped, and yeah, Kembo is dealing damage, it's getting huge. Uh, Sorry Animus, so I can try and ramp, because I'm running mono green, uh, uh, mono white, there's not 
there's only like a few ramp cards in white. Uh, Shower Spear. Pots and Plus One has vigilance and life, uh, has trample and lifelink. You can pay one and permanent your opponent controls lose attacks proof and indestructible. Really dumb equipment. There's no, uh, there's a reason why it's still like twenty pound. And then Mole of the Sky Cleave. Enter the battlefield, attach it to a creature, equip creature gains plus two plus two, flying and first strike. Like the the sky cleaver, really good. Only like two pound. I do like these equipments. I I like equipments full stop actually. Uh, now we go on to a lot of the sorcery instances you would probably have seen from like light poles or and my knights, but a light and tutor. Search your deck for artifact on charmed pearl on top. Uh, Surge of Salvation, dumb card. You and perms you control gain hexproof. And cannot and um, prevent all damage that will be done by black or red sources to creatures you control this turn. Uh, flawless, if I control my command, I can pay this without paying its mana cost. So, creatures I control gain in the stock the end turn. Uh, source to plowshare, stroke of midnight, to fairy's protection, white sun zenith. Uh, a Chroma's Will, really, really good. Especially since all my cats now have Double Strike again. And, uh, is it going to give Flying? I forget. Yeah, against Flying, Double Strike, Regents, Indestructible, Lifelink. Yeah, it gives them the works. This card is a game ender, pretty much. Uh, and this batch, just to... Normally it would tap target creature, but if I got three artifacts on board, it exiles it instead. So it is another source of Plowshare if I got three artifacts. I also ran this card in Urza too. Sorceries. Still shape a gift. Search for equipment at your hand. Open the armory. Search for an aura or equipment. Add to your hand. A deck tutor. Search your library for aura and an enchantment. Add to your hand. Unfinished business. Return to a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Then return up to two ores and or equipment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to that creature. So it's basically if I've got um, because yeah, it returns the creature first, so I can pure still powder, him. and then I bring out two equipments. Oh look, two equipments in the battlefield. Draw cards. Uh. This is kind of like a board wipe. It won't touch model cards, but it will car. It will exile all multicolor cards. So exile all multicolor opponents. Ravnica of War. Pretty good. It uh, gets rid of multicolored commanders. A hey. most of the time, I'm pretty much the only one that really plays mono decks. It just appealed to me more. Like I've got three mono colored decks at the moment. I've got Kemba, Radagas, Malinar. I only really have like what four decks, and three of them are mono. The other is three colors. Cut the deal. Each opponent draws a card. Then I draw a card for each card for each opponent draw who drew this way. So if I'm in a four-man pod, that's three cards of drawing. And then for the last one, we got Brilliant Restoration. It returns all enchantments and artifacts from my graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, I use this in Urza. I use this in Light Paws. I even use this in Sir Gwen. The card's really good, and I don't mind paying seven mana if it means that all my all my good cards come back from the bin. Speaking about good cards, we've got uh, some really dumb enchantments in this deck. Obviously. We've got this, equipment and always have flash, equipment is the battlefield, attached to your creature. Uh, forged anew. Ends the battlefield, return an equipment from your graveyard to the battlefield. 
As long as it's your turn, you may activate equip abilities any time you cast an instant. So yeah, this is only during my turn, but being able to instantly equip, say, boots to a creature that's getting targeted, really good. And then you may pay zero rather than pay the equip cost of the first equip ability uh, you you activate this turn. So if I don't have still pure, pad pure steel pattern, I've got this. Is it still fine? It's just once per turn. This is mostly in the deck for the instant equip and the um, bring back uh, equipment for my bin. Uh, Court of Ardenvale. Now, not a lot of people actually won this this card, but I actually really like it. Uh, Enters the battlefield, like all the all the core cards, you become the monarch. Um, but for this one, at the beginning of the uh, of your upkeep, you return a target opponent of mana value three or less from your graveyard to your hand. So that's like a good chunk of my artifacts, since most of them are like free and free and below drops. I want to say only like a few of them are like big six drops. Um, actually, how many like big? This this is the six drop. I want to say that's it. Everything else, yeah, other than that one equipment, everything else is free and below. And and if I am a monarch, they get put onto the battlefield instead from the bin. But I rather prefer them going to my hand, because then if I cast them or play them, I get to draw cards. That's the only reason why. And I prefer it, even if this will mainly get popped, but that's the risk of playing these cards. They will get popped. Uh, then we have Fairlar Retreat, so Landfall, choose one, create a 2-2 White Cat Beast, or put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control. Uh, they gain Vigilance in turn, so most of the time it is going to be I will make, I will put 1-1 counters on each creature, definitely on my token, so now my 2-2s two are now 3-3s free with Vision today in the turn, so I don't have to worry about them being tapped, I can just smack. Uh, to help with creating even more tokens, just in case that I don't have my my god, Anointed Possession. If I create one or more, I create twice that many. And then Virtue of loyalty. Uh, you, if you really want to make the the two two knight, you you can. I'd rather not. But beginning of your up uh, end step, put a one one counter on each creature you control. Then untap those creatures. So yeah, each creature you control gets a one one counter, and if they're tapped, they get untapped. Yeah, really, I, I love the courts. The courts from Eldrain are great. If you guys don't know, I spent a lot on Eldrain. A lot. Maybe close to like £300 on Eldrain, because I bought a collector's booster, a bundle box, and a few other packs. I spent a lot. A lot on Eldrain last year. And yeah. I'll be buying, and then I'll be spending even more money in the next few days, because Friday is the full release on Bloomberg. I got me a collector booster. Hopefully I pull good cards. Uh, for the last, like, equipment, uh, say equipment, last enchantment, this one's an aura. We've got Mantle of the Agents. Ends the battlefield, it returns all equipment and auras from your bin onto the battlefield attached to the attached creature. And then, enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each aura and equipment attached to it. So, yeah. Pretty big. Like, I feel more comfortable playing equipment decks. It's kind of how I started playing Magic. I started playing equipments and I just haven't stopped. I love... Artifact equipments are my favourite type of card. I don't know why, they're just really cool. I like the fact they can turn like a vanilla into a... a problem. <laughs> it's great. So, now we get on to the lands. Obviously, monocolor deck. And I say this card is extremely good anyway. So I can consider that. Choose a creature, choose a color. Taps one for that color, or taps two 
of that car, but that can only be used on activated land abilities. That's fine. I love this car a lot. I think it should be run in every model card deck. Uh, we have Miss Veil Plains. So enter the battlefield tap, but you can pay a white, tap it, and put a card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. Activate only to control two or more white permits, which is fine. We should have way more than that. Uh, and then we have Seat of the Empire. This is the channel land, so you can either play it and for it to tap for white, or you can channel, so you can discard from your hand. It deals 4 damage to target attacking or blocking creature. This basically costs 1 less to activate for each legendary creature you control. Funny thing is, this actually works for channel, because it's a land ability. You can tap this for 2 white to use this, so this only costs you 1 white to deal 4 damage. That's why I really like Sunken Citadel. It's so it's such a utility land. It's so good. And also, we're running an artifact based deck, so we're running a render sphere. We want to make sure we want to search for an equipment, uh, an artifact that can help us. Because yeah, it is a pay for, but I guess with this, it is like two. Uh, Hall of Heliod Generosity. This is just in case I, because I know my. My enchantments are going to get targeted. They are not going to last very long, especially since, like, this is usually the one that gets popped. People don't really like me making more tokens, so having ways of bringing them back from the bin is really helpful. Uh, War room to help with draw power. Renegade tower to help with me not discarding my good cards and my artifacts. Temple of the False God, it's just two cards, man. It helps with the cast. Uh, Maze of If, just in case there's a flyer that hits me, aka Mothman. <laughs> Mothman is so dumb. Um, yeah, just just in case. I don't want more rads and I don't want to get hit from the sky. Uh, for the last land, it's actually the Enchantment Land Urza Saga. Don't have to go much. Like a good half of my equipments are one drops, or I can go for sewing. Most of the time, it's sewing. But if I feel cheeky, I'll go for that. Um, I can go for that shadow sphere, <laughs> and obviously the rest are all basic lands, pretty much. They're all they're all just basic lands. Gotta love me my basic lands. I just love showcase lands. I think they're perfect. I want to try and finish all my decks in Showcase Lands. So, yeah. That's it for my Kemba Commander deck profile. So, as you guys know, I'll be uploading every Wednesday now, because I felt trying to upload two videos a week was stressful, because I didn't end up having much to upload. So, I'm hoping to do one video a week, upload every Wednesday, so at some point, uh, today is Wednesday, so no, today's Tuesday. I'll be uploading this video tomorrow, being Wednesday, at some point. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye.